Croatian propaganda echoing over the front line in Mostar, the most vicious theatre of war in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Since May, Bosnian Croats, aided and abetted by the Croatian government, have been laying siege to about 60,000 people in East Mostar. Almost all of them are Muslims and they're fighting back hard. So I've just uh, just arrived in Mostar, which is uh, the first city I've ever been to in Bosnia. Obviously, we all have memories of what Bosnia represented on the news. Uh, certainly, as a kid, at, well, as a kid, a teenager actually, uh, with the Bosnia War, uh, it certainly had an impact on my life and my perception on how one views this country. So now I'm basically here just to try and explore as much pos as possible. So I just checked into this uh, really friendly hostel, actually. Actually, the one that you can just saw just before that clip. And yeah, so far so good. I had a welcoming welcome drink, super cheap, very friendly. Nice bunch of people there. There's an Australian there, there's a Dutchman there, a couple of Brits. Uh, it's nice, it's quite an international crowd. And uh, basically, I am now here to explore the town, off, off to the center. The river Neretva cuts Mostar in two. These wrecked buildings are on the east bank, the stronghold of the Muslim-led Bosnian government forces. But they have an important foothold on the otherwise Croat-controlled west bank as well. 
To get there, you have to cross the old bridge, which was built in the 1500s. It's been hit many times, but it's still standing, just about. The soldiers told us that the best way across is to run. This is the least dangerous way over the river Neretva. A stroll across here used to be recommended in all the tourist guides. One of the bridge still stands, but it's even closer to the quiet positions. Uh, so here I am, staying on the foot of the very incredibly famous bridge of Mostar and this is where all the tourists are, uh, as you can see, lots of tourists, lots of tourists sort of uh, things to buy and uh, oh my god it, it's a beautiful day, look over here, sort of try and see if I can get any of this in shot but this is very picturesque, this is incredibly beautiful, see that bridge? Obviously, I'm going to try and show you some other shots, different angles later, but just for the bridge, it's amazing. And look, even mosques can look beautiful sometimes, despite what goes on in there. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, just going to take it all in. Also, I need to find an ATM. I've got no Bosnian money, so I need to find an ATM to get Bosnian money. I've found none so far. Hi, so I just paid entrance to a mosque. Can you believe it? Uh, it costs three euros to basically climb up the Koski Mehmed Pasha Mosque. Uh, this is at the bottom of the mosque, and I'm gonna go inside, which is just behind me, and then I'm gonna go up the minaret, which is just there. So hopefully, despite the view being amazing, and hopefully there won't be any call to prayer while I'm up there. I think I've just missed it actually. I heard it when I arrived in the city at five o'clock. I don't think there's another one until, uh, well, for at least another hour or so. Um, it's so beautiful here. I mean, I've been wander I've been walking around and then I've s I see bullet holes in certain buildings, but at the same time, it's just, there's so much natural beauty. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy to think what went on here. Um, and you can see, I mean, it isn't, the city isn't booming. I mean, there's, there's the streets where there's lots of tourists um, basically buying a sort of tourist tat. But the rest of the city, first impressions, they haven't covered up the bullet holes yet. So I can only guess they're not doing that for prosperity purposes. I'm going to guess that they're doing that because money's a little bit tight here. Um, but let's see, let's see. Um, so far, wow, this place is beautiful. Um, I'm going to go see. Let's have a look.
inside the Yag. So this is inside the Koski Mehed Pasha Mosque. Obviously you have to be slightly quiet. One person's trying to pray. Okay. Um, this is a bit, this is a bit scary. <laughs> we are on top of the minaret. Okay. Getting down is hard because it's just like there's not enough space to climb up this thing. Um, Okay, truly this is actually a little bit, a little scary, so <laughs> I'm going to go down. Yo, so I made it down off the top of the minaret. Uh, 78 steps to get to the top, and also 78 steps to get to the bottom. Problem is, the, um, the total width of the minaret is 1.3 meters, so if you divide that by two, and then you also take out maybe a good, I don't know, a good 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, meters, because it's a, basically a sort of a rod that runs through the middle that supports each step, there isn't that much space. Uh, so you can only imagine, um, sadly I have size 12 feet, you just saw them there. Um, my feet were basically hanging off each step, so that half my foot was on the step and half of it wasn't, wasn't on the step, so it made it, it, made it even more scary. Um, they have to, uh, a little bit more kudos goes to the uh, snipers that get up to the top of these minarets. Um, it's hard work getting up there, and then once up there, oh my god, it's... it's Imagine it. <laughs> or like the, the whole the whole time I kept thinking of the uh, you know a tank a tank basically firing a gun at the minaret and the, the whole minaret experience. I've seen one too many films about this place. Um, the mosque was built in 2001. A little bit well, it was rebuilt actually because it was just, it was pretty much destroyed during the war, uh, and then it was rebuilt thanks to the Turkish Islamic community and they rebuilt it in 2001 and what you see here is pretty much a completely rebuilt, rebuilt mosque but it's nice because the place of let tourists in which is kind of a rare thing you don't you don't really get that in a lot of places around the world and they also let women pray in the same place that men are praying so women pray side by side well at least that's this that's what i saw anyway i'm not sure if that's the case when it comes to prayers but that's what i saw anyway onwards The crowds on the hill know that if the bridge falls, they will have savaged morale on the other side. It would be a strategic victory as well, because it's the route to the front line. A local cameraman called Miralem Smal Hodjic documented the crowd's attempts to destroy it. He took these pictures. He's dead now, killed by a mortar a month or so ago.
Yo, so right behind me is the Crooked Bridge. Uh, actually collapsed in 1999. Um, not obviously during the war, it finished in 95. I need to check that. <laughs> but it collapsed um, mainly because of the war. Um, so they reconstructed it to basically look like what it did before 1967. However, it was basically built during the days of the Ottoman Empire. So back in the 16th century this was built. Originally, um, obviously some of the stones at the bottom are probably original Ottoman Empire stones, but yeah, what a pretty little bridge. It's nice though, look at this. Another mosque, just there. There's mosques everywhere. You can... But what an amazing little setting. So it turns out the, um, the very pretty part of Mostar is basically, as you'd expect, uh, in the center around the river. Um, I'm now, what would you effectively define as the outskirts? So if you look to this side, well actually that's not a good example, I was about to point out the buildings aren't so ugly. But uh, obviously this side, very beautiful, this side, less beautiful but it's still nice it is still nice I'm going to try and loop it loop back in I mean look at look at this There's some construction over here I don't know if that's a um, that might be a church could be wrong because I have seen crosses on the hills no it's not just a, it's not just um, it's not just moss in this town I better get off the road before I get run over Let's keep exploring It gets no better at night. 500 Muslims had just been robbed and thrown out of their homes in West Mostar by the Croats. They had to cross the river Neretva to get to comparative safety on a bridge made of rope and planks. Bosnian soldiers told them which way to go. The Croats were shooting at the people they just made refugees. Only a few hours before, until the Croat gangs had come for them and forced them over the front line, they thought they were safe. They'd been settling down for the night. The Croat machine guns didn't let up and the refugees kept on coming. They were trying to kill old men and women, mothers and their children. She was so frightened she could barely walk, but she tried to calm her sons. Each new family has to be fed and housed. This is a war crime with a cold purpose, to increase the pressure on the military authorities in East Mostar. The brutality of the expulsions drives home the message that compromise with Croat extremists is neither possible nor desirable.
Shells came in from the Kryat side occasionally, but it was a quiet day. The Bosnian positions were secure. Even Mostar itself, five miles away, was fairly calm. The general, though, was not a happy man. He should have been. In 30 hours of intense combat, his men had battled their way through a quiet controlled suburb and up the mountain called Hum, which dominates Mostar. It was probably their single most significant victory of the war. That mountain is the key, whether you're attacking or defending. Whoever wants to conquer Mostar must take control of the mountain. And whoever defends Mostar must keep control of the mountain, because it dominates the city and the whole of the valley. So I could be anywhere right now because I'm actually in a mall. The worst thing you could possibly do when you go traveling is to go into a mall. However, the benefit of this mall is it's 43 degrees outside and inside there's air conditioning. So yeah, I'm taking a little bit of uh, air con before I step out into the mall. But I'm kind of curious because I saw this, uh, as soon as I entered the mall, I saw this, um, I saw this flyer, EU information. Um, my guess is it's uh, European Union propaganda basically trying to incentivize the Bosnian people into the benefits of the European Union. How wrong will they be when they join up to the European Union? Uh, so I'm going to actually go and find this place because there's a little, there's a desk that says European Union info. See if they speak English and uh, see what they have to say about benefits of mm -hmm. the European Union. Sadly, like most uh, things in the European Union, they only work limited hours. Sadly, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait three and a half hours for this place to open. Maybe I'll come back, but I think that would be a little bit unproductive. Disappointing. I had a few questions to ask them. It's a failing project anyway. Good luck. Hey, so I've taken a walk away from the old town, uh, basically away from the sort of tourist attraction that is Mostar, um, to basically take in what is defined as the centre of the town, interestingly enough. The centre of the town is effectively the, the Krarats and the, uh, um, the, the Christians of uh, Bosnia, whereas the old town is predominantly the Muslim quarter. Um, so, as you would have seen in the video, there's a lot of mosques in the old town. Uh, a lot of very beautiful mosques, actually. Uh, most of them are new. It's almost like they're exerting their presence on the city. And you can certainly feel it when the call to prayer happens, because you can hear basically the entire city echoes out with the, uh, you know, you know, Al-Akbar. Um, however, this part of the city, which is to the north of the old town, not that pretty, but it's very, it's quite, it's much more modern. Um, this is, this is, this, it's very rare to see a Muslim around here. Uh, there's this, this clear division in the city. Um, people separate themselves. I don't know how, I don't know how, you know, how that will sort of change over time. But I can imagine that people keep to themselves. They don't really want part. They they don't want to do be part of each other's lives. Um, and you, can, you can't blame them. I mean, there was there was a huge war here. You know, in the early 90s, and people died, and people's friends were killing up, were killed, and friends were killing other people, and it was crazy. So, in such a short amount of time in my lifetime, I don't blame them for separating themselves. But it does feel. It does feel distinctly strange in the fact that uh, one side there's lots of mosques, uh, this side and in the surrounding hills you see uh, Christian, you know, crosses on the hills and you see the odd church. Definitely not as many churches are as mosques, but there's a couple of, I've seen a couple of churches. Anyway, journey continues.
Ah, uh, came looking for techno. I got televisions. Disappointing. Yo, so I haven't just magically teleported to Hong Kong. This is still Mostar, but Bruce Lee is here. A statue of Bruce Lee is actually in the center of Mostar. Uh, it's slightly off the tourist trail. It's a small little park to the, um, the west of the old town um, and just south of the center. And what I learned in the hostel last night from a video I watched, uh, this video, uh, basically is some I think Japanese guy basically touring around Mostar and he talks about uh, Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee basically symbolizes unity peace and bringing bringing all people together I'm not sure how that works I think it's because Bruce Lee is much loved in Bosnia and Bruce Lee effectively everyone has something in common they like Bruce Lee and if everyone likes Bruce Lee that's sort of the the common ground they can sort of build their relationship upon and rather than rather than fight despite the fact that Bruce Lee was the king of fighters people symbolize him as hope and friendship and peace that's my understanding anyway uh, hopefully I'm not wrong um, please correct me in the comments below if I am maybe they just they just love kung fu I could be completely wrong um, but you know what it's certainly worth, um, I'm gonna ask a few locals to see if their opinions and see what, they, see what I find out. So this bridge here, it's a little, it's supposed to be a little fountain in the middle of the park. I think it's supposed to symbolize the, the fact that the bridge actually collapsed. Um, in the late 90s, it, um, basically due to the due to the war. Well, actually, mi middle of the 90s, my mistake. Uh, it was finally rebuilt, I think, in 2004. Um, in retaliation, the Croats targeted the Mostar Bridge, which Muslims had built 400 years earlier. It was four years to the day since the Berlin Wall had come down, ushering in the new world order. Yo. So I'm standing next to Sniper Tower, it's this tall, basically, car park of a building. As you can see, this building is riddled with, uh, basically, bullet holes, artillery rounds. This one looks a little bit bigger than your average M16. Um, I'd say that was shelled by something quite substantial. I could be wrong, could have been picked up, but the entire, the entire structure is basically riddled with uh, bullet holes. And in all the surrounding buildings, 
it was pretty much the same. Like, you look across the street and you see bullet holes. So what would happen is the snipers would climb to the top of this building or they'd plant themselves halfway up this building and they'd fire shots at the sort of neighboring buildings. And if you can look they, towards the Muslim quarter, you can see directly opposite this building, basically, yeah, there we are. Sorry, it's, it's so bright here, it's difficult to see the screen. Um, lots of buildings were destroyed. Uh, I can imagine they didn't just fire sniper, sniper rounds. I'm sure there was other types of artillery. Uh, I mean, if we look here, we can't actually get into the building. I know some of the some of the guys I've met said they've uh, basically got into the building and they've climbed to the top. There's some stairs at the back. However, there's some police uh, basically parked near just around the corner, and they've basically said no, you can't go in. Um, there are certain times of the day when I know people do. Um, but look, just bullet holes everywhere. The war was not that long ago, 20 years, just less than 20 years ago. Well, don't, what am I talking about? Just 20 years ago. But still, the memory is fresh here. Mostar is the most devastated city in the former Yugoslavia, worse than Sarajevo or Vukovar. It's a vicious fight and it has a long way to go. Hodja commands the Bosnian army in Shantice, the old commercial district. Its backyards, basements and alleyways are where the heaviest fighting in Mostar happens. In Shantice, the Bosnian army is putting its new hardness to the test. The soldiers have found that in these urban battlefields you end up dead if you hold back, if you hesitate to kill. That means no pity and no mercy. Roger told us that the Croats make Bosnian army prisoners work on the front line too. Sometimes they make them build positions only a few feet away. The enemy were very close. We pushed forward our positions. Only a wall about 20 or 30 centimeters thick separated me from two HVO soldiers. They were using our prisoners, making them work at gunpoint. I had to throw two hand grenades in among them. Yo, so it was so hot. It's still 44 degrees. I got a haircut. I was sweating way too much. I had to get a haircut. Not bad, actually. I, I spent 10, 10 of their currency, which is uh, less than five euros. So I, I tipped them 50%. I thought that was a good deal. So happy days. This is a place to get your haircut. Well, if, you, if, you, if, you got, if you're losing your hair, this is a place to get your haircut. So the Hammam Museum, I'm in one of the old bathhouses right now. This is basically a museum. Everything you always want to know about Hammam baths. A uh, very small museum, I have to say. You've pretty much seen everything on camera. But there's a lot to read and it's 
certainly insightful. So, so it taught me, it's just taught me things that I did not know about Hammam baths. Uh, sadly, there are no more Hammam baths in Mostar. This was built in the 15th century, I think. Um, I could be, could be wrong by one century there. And yeah, it basically hasn't functioned for the last sort of 25 years, but it's still a beautiful renovated building. And for a princely sum of about two euros, it's worth a trip. So I'm in the Museum of War Photography. Uh, it basically follows a journalist, a guy called Wade Goddard, and he basically documented a lot of the conflict that happened here in Mostar back in 1993 and uh, 94. And right below me is, probably can't see because of the light, is the old bridge. Well, but it's obviously a new bridge because it was effectively destroyed. Here is actually a section of the old bridge here what remains of it because it was replaced um, by back in back in the early noughties uh, despite being destroyed in 1993 um, it's a nice museum uh, it's part of the old uh, sort of tower which used to be uh, sort of a watchtower back in the 16th century uh, for when the bridge was built but uh, certainly a good view although sadly I don't think you see that you see the water very beautiful view uh, this cost me six local currency, which is about three euros.
All right, so despite being 41 degrees, it's cold. It's about 12, 12 degrees maybe? I don't know, it's cold. This is the bridge everyone jumps off. Just there. I'm not gonna be doing that. There's one thing we um, all have in common, uh, that is all of us die. Um, I am reminded of the amount of death that happened here in one year. There's a lot of gravestones from 1993, obviously the peak of the uh, Balkan War, especially the peak for this town. Um, the peacekeepers sort of came in in the late 93 and it sort of all sort of resumed by 94. But a lot of people lost their lives pointlessly, all because of differences um, that are basically imposed on them because of this thing that they choose to believe in. Some people believe a man was picked up on a horse and then a flying and then the horse was a flying horse and it flew up into the sky. Other people believe uh, a man died and then was and then came back to life the following day. Imagine imagine if nobody believed these man-made, total, utter bollocks of a story, stories. Imagine the only differences we had were the differences of our, you know, what, where we came from. You know, some people come from the mountains, some people come from the seaside, some people come from farmlands, other people come from cities. If they were the only differences we had, maybe there would be less fighting and we'd, we'd see what each contributed to the world. The farmers obviously contribute the food, the, the people by the sea sometimes contribute the fish and sometimes also contribute the entertainment when you go on the holiday. People in the cities are contributing to the GDP which helps provide services to other people. Uh, rather than the sort of differences because of bullshit religion. Now while I say that I sit in a I sit in a graveyard surrounded by people that obviously did believe, you know, and I hope, I hope, hope for their sake they're in a better place, but the reality is they're, they're not, they're in the ground. And the sooner we can move past religion, uh, I can't come soon enough because it's going to keep dividing us and it's going to keep basically enslaving people to this bullshit belief that this life doesn't matter because this, of course, this life matters. This is all you have. Anyway. Um, is my rant for the uh, video, um, but I, uh, it's a religion, it, it, it's a waste, it, it causes way too much suffering, it's not worth it. Go for it.
What's your hostel code? What? Ah, yeah, to Tokyo, to, 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 Hostel Golden Bridge. And I highly recommend this place. Everyone should come visit. This is the man. Come visit. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I will be looking, looking with the brother. Every who you recommend will be uh, coming in the heart. Uh, this is the hostel, this open heart. We are not hostel, we are family all together. Thanks a lot for everything. I appreciate the time we was in as family. Uh, I hope you see you again. Thank what you. I say. Thank you. I will be never forgotten. Your spirit will be ever time staying in as family. And hope you see you again. I wish great day and everything the best. Thanks a lot. Gozimasu arigato. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, just come to an end of my stay in Mostar. Uh, it has to be said, it has been very, very enjoyable. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Dave. Apart from the uh, um, <laughs> walking in front of the road, they don't appreciate that. The same all over the world. Um, but despite the sort of, you know, this sort of the harshness and the sort of craziness that happened here over 20 years ago. I think the people of Mostar have uh, um, a lot to be thankful for. It's a, it's a great place, nice, friendly people. Um, I highly recommend it. You get, you get a chance to come to Bosnia, go see Mostar. You won't regret it. <laughs>